even in the music business, you know, they try to put us in boxes. Are you pop? Are you rock? Are you this? Are you that? And so as a person that has many talents, I kind of just got to this point where I didn't want to claim any box. So I just say I'm a man of many gifts. And as when I wear my artist hat as a singer, um, I like to call my genre rock, pop, soul. That's it, that's all. What up, what up, what up, what up? This is That's It, That's All. You know, I'm your girl, Casey Carnage. And today, you know we do the artist spotlights, but it's a very special show today. I really, truly believe in highlighting black women, of course, because I'm a black woman. But for me, this segment has been so important to me because as an artist myself, I feel that we have to you know, promote and highlight black artists. So on the typical, you know, I usually have my black girls here, but because I thought it was important to showcase all black artists, we got our first male on the show today. And not only is he a good friend of mine, but he's one of the most talented people that I know. Welcome, Alonzo. Hi, hi. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> welcome, I welcome. had no idea that I was the first male, so that's an honor. Yes, you are. And definitely the first of many, because that's what we're doing around here um so like i said he's one of the most talented people that i know Thank and you. this male he he if you see him on stage uh it's like literally breathtaking and not only is tra it's transcendent and also the way he can bring people together we're gonna talk a lot about him but you know oh. he <laughs> i ain't gonna be able to take it i wasn't expecting all of that <laughs> The, take it in, take it in, take take your flowers. <laughs> Thank um, you. He hails from Illinois. He got his career started in dance and trailed into the music business, taking no prisoners. Not only is he a great friend of mine, like I said, and I'm going to keep saying it, he's one of the most talented people that I know. Today, we're going to dive into his journey through dance, music, and his recent journey in becoming a transformational coach. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Well, first How's of your all, day? Thank you. Yes. I, I I I don't think there's ever been a moment where we've really told each other like how we feel about each other. But I want you to know that I feel the same about you. Oh, I appreciate That's that. That's why like I don't call people auntie. <laughs> like I have this thing in LA where I call people my family, y'all. And Sometimes you're a brother or a sister, but if I call you an auntie, it means like you're some type of uh, like almost like a role model. Like I look up to you in some type of way. And then, of course, there's the mothers. <laughs> so, like, I just know that I love you the same and I'm so grateful to be here. Yes. Thank you. I'll take my flowers, too. Yep. Well, let's jump into it. T tell about tell us about who you are, not only as a person, but as an artist. I really just call myself a man of many gifts. Um, since I started out in dance and felt this calling to become a singer, like from a really young age, I always felt the need to like have to choose a box. And I feel like the generation before us, they always had to have, everything had to have a title. You are this religion, you're this political party. This is what you do. And even in the music business, you know, they try to put us in boxes. Are you pop? Are you rock? Are you this? Are you that? And so as a person that has many talents, I kind of just got to this point where I didn't want to claim any box. So I just say I'm a man of many gifts. And as when I wear my artist hat as a singer, um, I like to call my genre rock, pop, soul. Mm -hmm. So it's like a fusion of things. Well, you already know that I know because I was um, <laughs> rock, pop, and funk. Yes. yes. I was definitely rock, pop, and funk. So I get that. Yep. Um, I get. I understand the, the idea of trying to be be put in a box. I mean, you always told me, like, you always doing something. I don't know what you do with the day, but you always doing something. You don't play. And, I, you know, I believe in that. I, I truly believe in honing on your gifts. So I'm glad that you are you've come to a point in your life where you say, I am all things. I'm yeah. not just one thing. Cause that is a powerful, um, you know, journey to 
get on and yeah. accomplish. It's mm-hmm. it's it's very transcendent, like I said. Mm-hmm. Um, so is Alonzo your birth name or is that your your artist name? Alonzo is my birth name. Okay. But remember, my name was Prince Alonzo. Yes. And then when the whole Prince tour thing happened, I was feeling like people thought that I wanted to be him. So I took Prince off of my name and just went with Alonzo. And started getting compared to Prince even more, so it really didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. You kept your name. <laughs> it really didn't matter, but yeah, Alonzo is my birth name. Okay, so um, was there any other names? Just a fun thing. Was there any other names? Or deciding on what your artist name was gonna be? Was there Ooh, any other names that question. you was thinking about? Mm, no, but there is another Alonzo, and I gotta say this because I'll be irritated about it sometimes. <laughs> He is this famous rapper in Paris, and he's, like, signed and everything. And I almost wanted to change my name back to Prince Alonzo because when you would Google Prince Alonzo, all my stuff would come up. Now you just Google Alonzo, you're going to come up with everybody. You know. and, but <laughs> my friend, uh, one of my um, executive friends, he really, he made a good point and he was just like, you're just going to have to become more famous than him. Pretty much. Yeah. Like I say, like, people like, people talking about some, um, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know my you know my answer to that is make more money. Yep. <laughs> it's not that you can't do anything, make more yep. money, figure it out. Um, so was being an artist something you always wanted to be or do you think it was just like gifted upon on you like you snapped in it one day and it's like this is what I want to be you know it's to answer your question yes my whole life I have always performed in my rooms whether it was like in the bedroom I'm telling you and I'm a Pisces so I got a vivid imagination <laughs> I can I can imagine stadiums the walls are just people. I have literally cried in my living room as if I was singing to people because I can just feel and see that clearly. And the thing is, is that in my younger years, dance, my mom calls dance my first gift. So it came to me naturally and I became really popular for it early on. Were you on. trained in it or was this something that yeah. you naturally? Okay. I trained in dance. I went to college for dance and then I had the dance crew. That's when America's Got Talent thing happened. Everybody thought I went on America's Got Talent as a singer when they look back. But no, I was the leader of a dance crew as a choreographer. And it was actually on that show that I kind of remember, you know, when you're on TV and the interviews and you talking about make sure you fight for your dreams. And I'm like, bro, you up in here telling millions of people to chase their dreams and you're not really pursuing your own real Mm dreams. So literally a year after America's Got Talent. I said, I'm becoming a singer. And I the dance team kind of took a back seat. And that's when I went to China and did that whole thing. Well, that's funny that you bring up America's um, Got Talent because that was going to be one of my next questions I was talking to you. Um, you know, people always go on these reality shows, these competition shows. How was that process? Like, is this something that someone told you is like, y'all need to audition for? Something that you found as the choreographer and, the, you know, the lead of it? Like, why did y'all decide to go How in there? How did it happen? Uh, It was a really interesting uh, way for us. Um, This was back when dance crews was a big thing. Like if we... Was it ACDC? What is it called? There was ABDC. There was America's Best Dance Crew. (laughs) America's Best Dance Crew was a thing. So You Think You Can Dance was a thing. We had the movies that you got served. Was the Crumpers? Yeah, all of that. And Uh so it was an era in time. Like the same way that we are... Everybody has turned their ear toward healing and transformation now. Back in those days, we was about the dance crews. And so um, it was something along, oh, 106 and Park. You remember 106 and Park? Of course. I, I'm from Jersey. Of yeah. course I know 106 and Park. So 106 and Park used to have a, a dance competition called Wild Out Wednesday. We went on Wild Out Wednesday, one, and then that's how America's Got Talent seen us. But it is funny how TV shows work because they were absolutely like there's always a shoe that you have to fit. Mm -hmm. So like they had they dance crew that were from privileged kids that their mom and dad had money to put them in dance school and blah, blah, blah. We were the crew from the hood. So they found us. They was like, okay, they look rough around the edges. Let's bring these guys on. What kind of sob story they gave y'all? 
baby. What was the story? It Did was, you know that? You know that you. It was like you guys. Are, you guys are from this rough area, and honestly, it was true. You mm-hmm. know, my hometown, which is a little small town near Chicago called Rockford, Illinois. It was in Forbes as the ninth most dangerous city in America. Like it was a big deal at the time, and. They they brought us on. But the thing is, is that you couldn't deny that we was dancing for something like looking back at that footage. We was fighting. Um, and I and I'm really grateful for my dance years. But to bring it back to now is that I did always have this voice and I kind of hit it. That's yeah. amazing. It's so funny that you brought up 106 in Park because, you know, um, I actually was on 106 in Park. On the, um, you remember when Beauty Shop came out with Queen Latifah? So it was five of me and my friends, and literally, like, you know, we the cute girls, you know, coming from Rockland, New Jersey, and four of us got picked to be on that show. Wow. One of us, um, like, I, I think it was me and another friend. We, I had braids in my hair, so they interviewed me for the braids, and they actually did two of my friends' hair. They had the good hair. They could just curl real quick. Like, Ooh, you could take my. It was, I want, it was Free AJ. Ooh, that, yeah, I'm free AJ. Yeah, I'm free yeah. AJ time. I'm a little older than them you. I'm like, free, free AJ. But um, that is great. That's great. Um, that th- that story is definitely like something that you talk about, like you know, television. Um, gratefully that you know you guys were able to transcend out of that and mm-hmm. you know fulfill your dreams. Clearly, yeah. like you went to China. You're doing your like y'all. Y'all should yeah. see this man's shows. And I, I'm I, I'm waiting for you to do a solo show. Like an actual solo show. I'm so and, ready to. I'm so ready. But, you know, what? what's holding you back from doing it? First of all, I'm so ready because I be watching what be going on. <laughs> and I just know in my heart of hearts that I will really give the people a run for their money. When I really do go in and and put on my full shows, like, because right now I just be keeping it cool. I just be singing, standing at the mic stand. I haven't even really let loose as an artist that dances and well, why i why not in it, it was all about timing so I like um i think that back in the day like and when i mean by back in the day this is pre-pandemic <laughs> back in the day it's, <laughs> life was has been different after the pandemic but when we were all at you know sayers and doing all of these shows for me it was about um proving yourself vocally and so I didn't want to distract the fact that I could sing. And especially when you're trying to transition from dance to singing, they can easily be like, uh-uh. You a dance to that singing. Yeah, you, you a dance to that singing. You should keep, no, I don't need you to know <laughs> that I can sing. You know what I mean? Um, but now that I feel like I have gotten past, you know, trying to prove that, um, I'm ready to bring it back to the forefront. But, you know, I was recording music and then the pandemic happened and, Really, for the last three years, I kind of just took a break. Mm -hmm. Um, I went deeper into my healing journey. And uh, now I'm at a place where I'm ready to start doing it again. And that's coming. I understand. You see where I'm at? I understand. It's like, you know, we we were... (laughs) We were in a rat race for a Mm. long time. And it was a thing where you felt like you had to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you were proving yourself for other reasons and I was proving myself, but at the end of the day, we still were proving ourselves for the people that was before us. And that can get a very nerve wracking. So it's, it's nice to hear that you took the time to actually heal. I took a time to really just say, what is it that I want to do? Like, I literally was like, I have a degree in broadcast journalism. Why am I not using it? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no reason for me not to be using it. And the the thing about it is that I wanted to create a platform for me, my friends, and the amazing people that I know, because I know so many of it. Yeah. I know so many of them. Mm-hmm. And it was important for me, like you said, to get outside of that box yeah. of what this, what you you know, what can you do? This is what you look like. Oh, you're a little doll. You can sing this way. You can yeah. dance this way. Because, you know, I'm fine. But you like, fine, you know what I mean? You. But it's like, you got to forge your own path. Yeah. So it's good that you took that time to do that because that is very, very important to and do And we so. got to be unapologetic about it. Oh. Like, I feel like nowadays everybody is, they be having FOMO and you just so scared to get left behind. And, and, and it can feel that way because when you're on social media, it looked like everybody, you're busy and and working and booked and blessed as they call it and this and that. But there's a big part of life that takes place behind the scenes. And I needed to put the focus on that because if we attend ourselves behind the scenes, then we show up better when it's time to show up. 
And so I think that's the same with you. Like with you taking that time, it allowed you to be able to gain clarity about the next steps that need to be taken. And that's definitely what happened with me, too. I understand that. Okay, well, let's let's go back. Let's go back. What was one of the first songs you ever wrote? You know, well, first of all, I don't consider myself the strongest writer. Um, Things just come to me sometimes. But the other thing is that I have a very, like, old soul and, like, these alternate personalities in myself. So one of them oh, we is gonna like get a, to it. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. <laughs> so one of them is like an old lady. So sometimes when I write songs, I, it sounds like an old woman. And that can't be the kind of music that I make. First of all, first of all, speaking <laughs> of this old woman, y'all, he is TikTok famous for oh, being no. <laughs> Grandma Arlene. And when I tell you, it is literally some of the funniest shit Yo. I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I be having like, too much fun. Like, I feel like you're like, like you, like going back to what you said about you being in your room. I feel like that's your kid coming out, being in your room again. Being Grandma Arlene, y'all. Yeah, if y'all got a chance to look up this man's TikTok. And been around for a long time. You know how back in high school y'all would have like old lady day or, uh, you know, whatever dress up. Oh, the, on that day, I was living. <laughs> Dressed up like an old woman do, Ooh, going through the hallway. Why are you having her do the old lady challenge with your friends? You remember I, I, wanna, you? I think I want to do that for like a birthday or something. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't done it already. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do it. Okay, wait, wait, back to my question. We got okay, sidetracked yeah, with Grandma yeah. Lee. What was the first song you ever wrote? First song I ever wrote. Um, I don't remember. But the one, the first song on my, my last album that I wrote was Save Me From Myself. Mm. And the reason why that comes to mind first, because it was like the first moment of getting out of my own way in my writing. Um, and it was literally called Save Me From Myself. Um, so that comes to mind first. Save me okay, from okay, okay. All right. So I like to play a games on Ooh, my show. Let's do it. And this one is called Who's Your Jam? Okay. Who's Your Jam? Who's Your Jam? See, she ain't tell me about no games, <laughs> y'all. So. I got surprises. Okay. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Okay. Are you ready? I'm nervous. Usher versus Chris Brown. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, they being messy. Uh, You know, I'm going to always go for the OGs. And, and... Even Chris Brown look up to Usher. So we don't have to go with Usher. Usher, yes. Yeah. Joe versus Joe to C. I love Joe to C. Joe to C. But I did just see Joe. Joe opened up for Fantasia recently. I love Joe. It was good. They were singing all his songs. It was a vibe. But Joe to C. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Yo, you know, I like that dramatic type of singing. But one thing I will say about Joe and really all the guys from that era, why they all still got their voice? Because they was singing through cocaine. They were singing heroin, for real. They, they, <laughs> through drug abuse, Yo. physical abuse. Yeah. They, they, got, they got some pain yep. and memories in the voices. That's why they still got it. And That's they come they from that time it. where you had to really be able to sing. Really be able to so sing. So it's in them. Right. I was like, it ain't wow. No, ain't no, the auto-tune wasn't around. Yeah. Like they were singing. They was harmonizing. Mm-hmm. That's why they still got their voices. Yeah, okay. he, he was doing it. James Brown versus Stevie Wonder. Hmm. I'm gonna go with James. Hey, I like the drama. Oh, the drama. You feel me. Okay, Neo versus Trey Songs. I don't really know anything about these two young men. You don't know? You don't know uh, Neo? I don't know. I know Neo. Man, I remember. So I don't want to go. That, so sick of love that songs, man. And Trey Songs. I can't think of any I, Trey Songs song, but I remember it was good. Yeah, it Trey Songs had some good songs. Yeah, some hits. I think I would go with Trey Songs. Like I, I remember playing more of his songs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Drew Hill versus Jagged Edge. Why are you naming all these? <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, y'all. I don't be honest to God, truth. All I listened to, even growing up, was women divas. So some of these guys, I don't really Women divas? Okay. Well, I'm going to skip some of these because you probably don't know them. All right. But I'm going to go to the last one. Prince versus Michael Jackson. (sighs) I'm going to go with Michael. 
and as we should. And but I love <laughs> Prince. Everybody brings Prince up with me. And the thing, the funny thing is, is I really I grew up impersonating Michael. That's how I really got my dance start. Mm-hmm. And my first performance ever was a uh, uh, impersonation of Michael. But I was just I'm so there's the Michael magic that he had. Like you ever seen that video where he like popped out of the stage and just stood there for like yes. five minutes. I'm a big Michael fan. People don't know what Moonwalker is. I'll be like, you ever seen Moonwalker? They'd be like, what's that? I'm like, yeah. I'll be wanting to you jump on know. my seat. Yep. I said, you ain't never seen Moonwalker. Yep. And this is the thing. <laughs> I cannot stand when people try to compare Michael. Like they try to say that this today's Michael and da 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 da. There is nobody never. that can stand there and do nothing. And just send everybody to the hospital. Because mind you, they was coming out on stretch. So I got a story about Michael. So literally, the, I you know, like on some real, I, I still, I still say, I know I, this is me being full of myself, but I feel like I killed Michael. And I'm going to tell you why I feel like I killed Michael. The summer before, the August before Michael passed away, I was sitting with some friends and we was eating weed brownies. Not going to lie. Ooh. We sitting eating, I was high as fuck eating Domino's yeah, pizza. The, eating Domino's pizza. And I said, I don't know how Michael Jackson died. I was like, y'all, y'all know, if Michael Jackson died, you know the world going to be in mourning. And they laughed me out. They, I, I verbatim wow. said those words. I wow. said, if Michael Jackson died, the world is going to be in mourning. The week before. Fast forward to the year later, I was sitting at oh. Uno's. I don't know if anybody um, was on the East Coast. If y'all had Uno's, mm. um, the restaurant Uno's was like Mm-mm. a pizza place. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I was sitting there eating, mm, 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 eating. And I look up on the screen. First day it was like Fair Fawcett. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Fair Fawcett fans. I don't mean to laugh. Yo. It was like Fair Fawcett came across the line. I was like, oh, Fair Fawcett. Five minutes later, Michael Jackson died. I almost fell out of my oh, seat. Yeah, and then everybody, terrible. the world was in mourning. They were showing people out the hospital. They were showing people in bad. Tibet. They were showing people in England. People was losing that their was shit. And I said to myself, I said, oh, my God, did I, lose, did I kill Michael? Yep. Like, <laughs> I really said Bro, that to myself. But I got dressed for the funeral. I, me too. Sat in front of the TV and everything and like I was him there. And, him and Whitney Houston. Yep. And, you know, Whitney is a... Um, as a Jersey girl, so you know we was, you know yeah. we was hurt. Yeah. And when I tell you, my mom will tell you that my two favorite things that I used to like to um, sing was "I Will Always Love You" and Luke. <laughs> what's Luke? Uh, 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 what's the song? Uh, I can't think of it now, but uh, I'll come back to you. I'm, I'm gonna get back to you. Okay, it's the okay. one. It's, it's the, it's the nasty one. It's the do it in the bud. It's the. <laughs> Ah, uh, what's that? It's a Whitney song? No, no, Luke, 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 the artist Luke. Oh, I don't no, know. No, no, it's a different is. one. But anyway, scratch that. We ain't gonna talk about it, but that's what it was. Mm. Whitney was my jam. Mm-hmm. But okay. And that is the conclusion of What's Your Jam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, great. I'm all glad right. I made it. <laughs> you made it through. I don't you know nothing about all them guys. Now, you asked me about some Patty, some Tina, some Aretha, some Shaka. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Before we jump into the, the song that we're gonna feature today, um, I want to talk about your decision of becoming a transformational coach. Mm-hmm. What exactly, you know, what is that one? Of the, tell the people what it is, mm-hmm, but also mm-hmm. what do you wish to accomplish with it? Mm. Uh, so as we talked about, I kind of went into my healing journey really deeply over the last couple of years. And I feel like the pandemic like prompted everybody to start to go inside and As we got like out of the pandemic and kind of a couple years forward where life kind of started to find some type of normalcy again. Is that a word? Yeah. Yes. Y'all, I'm kind of slow. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Normalcy. Um, I kind of felt like it was time for me to transition from not only just focusing on my healing, but started to facilitate some type of space that could help other people in their healing. So all of my new music is spiritual. I'm talking to people's hearts. I'm speaking about overcoming traumas and and love and um, really going deep. I have meditations on my new project. I'm going to be taking people in meditations at the live shows. And so I've been at these meditation retreats around the world for years now. And I'm always in these spaces. And everybody already called me for advice. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm the friend that everybody calls when they're trying to get something off their chest and figure out what to do. So it just made sense. Um, And to be able to learn how to 
to speak publicly and coach on a professional level. Like we're really learning about how like TED Talks really work and how to really give presentations to companies because nowadays a lot of these um, big companies are bringing in um, meditation coaches. Well, we don't say meditation. We say uh, uh, well-being mm-hmm. um, and mindfulness. Um, but everyone's really just trying to become more conscious. And so if you think like a therapist, life coach put together, that's what transformational coaching would be. But the big thing is transformational. So we're not just giving people advice. We're like helping people actually transform their lives. And I think that a lot of times people got opinions. We always got to give our two cents. And sometimes it helps people change something, but nothing's really changed unless you transform. Well, absolutely. And I think one of the steps to that is like, you ever notice when people, you you talk about somebody and they just unload on you without asking you first. Yep. That would get you cursed out. Like you need to (laughs) ask me, am I in a position and a place to receive all your junk? Mm. And I think that is a great, you know, great thing that you're doing like I definitely want to talk to you more about it um, and get one of these meditations yeah. get one of these meditations because That's I practice. also feel like I've been a person who the same people call for advice people are always asking what's going on yeah. and I've always been a public speaker like mm-hmm. I've never from from when I from when I for, from all I can remember I've never had a problem I had a problem singing in front of people mm. never had a problem talking in front of people Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I Same. love that we, journey. We share that. We share the, the singing thing. And uh, I think the biggest thing is just sometimes with the 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 coaching or the, the people I'm packing, we really don't know how to hold people's energy. But that's another skill that we've been able to to learn, like actually how to protect our energy and still allow people to dump you know what I mean? And then when it's done, to be able to let it go. Because a lot of times we hold on to things way after the experience. It's like the cool, it was like the warm up and then the cool down. Right. Like, it's mm-hmm. the warm up and the cool down. Yep. All right, bet. Well, y'all, if y'all need some um, coaching, some meditation, make sure y'all hit him up. Um, like I said, this man is amazing. Whatever he is going to bestow on you, I'm sure it'll help you. Um, all right, let's talk about the song Sex in You. Sex and you. So what was the imp- inspiration behind it? Like that song was definitely giving, it, <laughs> when I first heard it, it was giving Prince, Little Red Corvette with the ch Yes. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> so it's like Little Red Corvette with a little bit of Dove's Cry. Um, definitely somewhat of the inspiration. But so Sex and You was my first song that was um that caught the eye of the grammys i didn't get a nomination but it was on the ballot and they voted and there was something about that project like my whole last album this is probably tmi but I, i've talked about it publicly i like completely uh i guess it might be called celibacy yeah. I went celibate while I was writing my album. But the biggest thing is like I think that celibacy means that you're just not w- that you're you're not participating with other people but you can please yourself. I wasn't even I thought celibacy was no sexual activity at all. I don't know. So <laughs> I'm I, pretty sure I celibacy think, is no sexual activity. I think at all. celibacy is like no intercourse and stuff with people but you can still masturbate. <laughs> Let me look it up. I'm going to look it up. Can we talk about masturbation on this yes, show? Yes, you can talk about whatever. You, okay. you, you ain't seen some of my other episodes. Oh, my gosh. So, so long story short, I wasn't allowing myself to release. Uh-huh. And the, the intention behind that was to be able to hold my creative energy inside as much as I could so that I could then transmute that energy into creative energy for the writing of the project. Mm-hmm. And Sex and You was a song that I wrote on a really horny night. (laughs) Um, Like the verse is literally, I want you so bad, baby, but now I save my body for me. You know, like I was really tapping into the sometimes you want it, but sometimes you got to keep it for yourself. And that was just during that time. I'm 
enjoying myself you enjoy now. Yourself? Okay, but- so just to go back to the celibacy, it's the practice of not having sex, but not everyone defines celibacy the same way. Got it. So there you go. Yeah, so, so there you go. So it was some form. I was, I'm was. i sure it was celibacy, but, oh, they call it retention, too. That's what I was practicing. Or abstinence. There's so many words. Yes, not all that stuff. Say, I ain't having <laughs> sex. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so long story short, that's how Sex and You was born. I... Wait, was sexing you like the coming out of you about to have sex? No, it was in the middle of the whole thing. Like I was, I'm telling you, I went, I tried to go the full 90 days without releasing once. And sex and you was like on the 40th day. Mm -hmm. So I was really like ready. Ready. (laughs) (laughs) But it was so important to me to like, like, People don't know that your sexual energy, like we create life with it. So to take the same energy that you create life with and put it in your music or manifesting goals, it can be really powerful. And so that's what I was doing during that time and during that project and Sex and You, which if we really think about it, Sex and You was written on my quote unquote horniest night. It is my most successful song, most streamed, Grammy seen it. It is the most, like, the biggest, my biggest accomplishment so far is through that song. Most views on YouTube. Well, look at God. So, yeah. He that's said, stop touching yourself and stop touching other people, yeah, and I'm going to give you a Grammy-nominated song. No. <laughs> okay, God. All right. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Well, let's get into it. This is Sexing You by Alonzo.
Ooh, y'all, yes, I heard that song a yes, that was sexing you by Alonzo. That joke made me want to touch myself. You I was so like, funny. I was like, ooh, and sexing me. She said this made me want to touch <laughs> it myself. It did. I was like, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. <laughs> uh, so oh who you, um, who did you work on the song with? That was produced by Eric Zane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he produced my whole last project. Okay, shout out to Eric. Shout what out up, boo? to Eric Zane. I love All you. All right. Well, Alonzo, thank you for coming. I'm so, I had so much fun talking to you and, you know, letting the people in the world know you the way I know you. Hey. Um, where can they find you? And where can they find your I music? I am, I think, uh, at, on everything, it's the same thing. Because, you know, sometimes the name don't be available. But Got underscore, triple word, score, all yeah, that. Yeah, one, two, three. <laughs> and, but uh, my Instagram and TikTok are at Story of Alonzo. And I actually just created a Twitter for the first time. I still um, can't get into Twitter. Like, it's too many platforms. Can they? Yeah, I wish they just so come many. Up. They got Thread now and this and that, but all of them are as Story of Alonzo. All yeah. right, all right. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, Alonzo, thank you for coming. I love you. Um, if you guys are enjoying these artist spotlights, and there any, if there's any other black artist you think that should be on this platform and this show and you want to hear about, please don't hesitate to like, sc- subscribe, share, email, tweet, do all the things comment whatever y'all want to do to get all to us things. so we can give the information if you got any nice notes to tell Alonzo he'll see them as well um, and that's a wrap uh-uh, y'all don't message me he might want to message depending on who you are hey. he not celibate no more y'all <laughs> and that's it that's, that's all. all that's it that's all is written by me Casey Carnage and produced by myself and Rick Barrio Dill Associate producer, Brie Corey. Assistant producer, Larissa Donahoe. Audio and video engineering and studio facilities provided by Slap Studios LA with distribution through our collective for social progress and cultural expression, Slap the Network. If you have any ideas for a show you want to hear or see, please email us at info at slapthepower.com. And as always, go to dazitdasall.com and sign up there to make sure you will never miss a thing. See you next show.